Father God, I thank you so much for the awesome privilege of being able to come into your house tonight to worship you, Lord. Father God, I ask that you just bring us into your presence, Lord. We're here for you. Lord, I ask that you would prepare every heart that's here, every heart that's on their way. Prepare them for the word. Lord, we just bring you our sacrifice of praise tonight, Lord. We just give you all the glory, all the honor. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, move, move, Holy Spirit. We prepare the way of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
on, prepare the way, prepare the way, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, mountain, be made low. Oh, valley, be raised up. We prepare the way. We prepare your way, Lord. We prepare your way, Lord. Come on, come on. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Temple is filled with the glory of God. And the temple is filled with the glory of God. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it out. We say, And the temple is filled with the glory of God. And the temple is filled with the glory of God. Oh, we proclaim it today. Oh, that this church is filled. Oh, and the temple is filled with the glory of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Let it be known. Let it be said that your glory fills the temple. And the temple is filled with the glory of God. Hallelujah. And the temple is filled with the glory of God. Come on. Oh, we believe it by faith and we sing it and shout it out. Hey. And the temple is filled with the glory of God. Oh, the one true God. Oh, Jehovah. Jehovah. Hey. And the temple is the glory of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey. And the temple is filled with the glory of God. Oh. Come on, come on, son. Chain breaker, mountain mover, you're my healer. Yahweh, Yahweh. We make a chain breaker, mountain mover, you're my healer. Yahweh, Yahweh. We make a 
chain breaker, mountain mover, you're my healer, Yahweh.
like he's not on time. It may look like he's passed you by. Oh, but hold on, oh, hold on. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. Oh, 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 oh he's a promise keeper. Oh, he'll never fail. He'll never let you down.
Worship with one voice. Let every voice sing it. Oh, here 
Sing it louder. Come on, church. Come on, that's the heart of worship. Come on. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you come like a flame of fire, God, upon each one's head. Come on. That you come like a flame of fire upon each person. That literally every single person in this meeting, we pray, is touched by your fire, God. We pray that every single person in this meeting, God, be touched by your fire, touched by your glory, be covered, be covered by your presence, God, your glory presence breakthrough i prophesy there's breakthrough coming to you in this service there's a breakthrough coming the breaker is coming to make a war to make a war to make a way come on to make war for his beloved we decree the breaker goes before you and makes a way he says i am the way i am the only way open gate of heaven the open gate angels ascending and descending Come on, somebody decree the scripture out of Genesis. The angels ascend and descend. Come on, upon the ladder. Come on, to the Lord of glory. And Jacob took the oil and he anointed the place where they were. He anointed the rock. And it was known as Bethel, the house of God. And he said, how awesome is this place. It is the gate of heaven. It is the house of God. We just decree the open gate, Lord. Come on, help me, saints. And even, and even leading up to this weekend, God, we've come to prepare the way for you. We've come as worshipers, as Levites, God, as prayer warriors. Come on, guys. That we would prepare the way. That you, we would enthrone you in our praises, God, tonight, God. We would lift you up with our words, God, with the revelation of Jesus tonight, God. We've come to lift you up. We've come to prepare the way. Let every mountain be brought low. Come on, somebody help me. Lord, we humble ourselves. Come on, God can't do that for you. You've got to humble yourself. We choose to humble ourselves, God. If we've spoken against your anointed, if we've opened our mouth. Come on, somebody help me pray. Lord, we choose to humble ourselves, God. That we would make no room for the devil, God. Come on, that every valley be lifted up. That those that have been trampled, come on, those that have become a doormat, we, we decree there's going to be a word in season to the weary to lift up those that have been trampled upon. God's going to lift you. If you make the rough places smooth, Jesus, we've, we want to make the rough places smooth, God. We say, help us, God. Make a smooth runway for your presence. And lastly, Lord, make the crooked places straight. The crooked place, any place in me that I'm not ready to obey. Come on, somebody say, Lord, help me. Make the crooked places straight. Say it, Lord Jesus, you paid for it. You are crushed for my iniquity. You are crushed for my crookedness. You're pierced for my transgression, for my sin. But you are crushed for my iniquity, the crooked places. That you could take out a stony heart and put a brand new heart in me, God. How many is that your prayer? How many are in process? Come on. The chastisement for our peace, the beating, the brutal beating of Jesus, paid for the chaos. Come on. There's no more chaos in our homes. Somebody decree, no more chaos. Come on, no more striving. You paid for our peace, Lord. You are the Prince of Peace, the Tsar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. We bless you. How many just bless him with me? We bless you.
We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We welcome you, God, to fill our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please tell somebody you're glad they came. Greet somebody with a holy kiss. No, don't kiss nobody. It's not funny. Sorry. Can we go ahead and ask our ushers to come up? Can y'all give our ushers a hand for being awesome? Let me go ahead and give you an offering scripture. <laughs> My plan is to cut down the messages a little bit because we want to make more room for the move of God at the end of the services. Amen. Uh, and that's my first gift, really. If, if I travel, that's primarily what we do is move in the Spirit. And even people will be like, well, we need more of the Word. And you preach the Word for an hour, like, well, we need the Spirit. Well, well go pray then. Amen. Get Him in your house. Amen. Bring your fire to church. Here we go. So Proverbs eleven twenty four through 25. Can y'all read it with me? There is one who scatters. Say with me, who gives yet increases more. And there's one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. Somebody shout with me like you believe the Bible. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Can somebody give God a shout of praise for the promise of his word? Notice a couple of things real fast is that when he's talking about watering, he's literally talking about finances. He's literally talking about your finances. Amen? And another thing is, there's a strange thing that happens when people give by faith. They're giving. So mathematically, it doesn't seem to make sense because they're giving, but yet they're increasing more. Somebody say increase. And then there's someone that tries to withhold. So they're like, I don't want to touch my bank account because I can't, I can't afford it. I can't afford to give. And then they go to poverty. Does anybody believe the word or is it just me? I mean, I'm trying to, sometimes I read a scripture and I'm like, man, this is crazy. But how many of the Bible's telling you a spiritual principle? Amen? And I think it's interesting if you actually look at it for what it says. So there's a person that, that holds their money when, they're, when they could have given. Amen? And they come to poverty. You know what that tells me? And I have a word for you. That the spirit of generosity breaks the spirit of poverty. Come on, can somebody give God a praise if you believe that tonight? And we're not trying to see how much offering can we get on a Wednesday night. I am not traveling through to see how much of an offering we can get for the one night of ministry. We want to see people's lives blessed financially year in and year out, month in and month out, and that's what we do. We see that all the time. Amen? So if we don't preach something out of the Word, we won't see it in the people. Amen? If you don't ever talk about healing, you won't see healing in the people. Amen? And so whatever uh, promise God spoke about, the preacher has to live it. Amen? And believe it, and then people can receive it in their life. Amen? So I'm going to go ahead and pray for you and uh, release the children to give and to go to children's church and the preteens and the teens and all kind of teens. You ready? So Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, blessing come. And I pray again, Deuteronomy 8.18, that you give power to create wealth in your house, Lord. That you, that you bless the finances, God, especially of those who labor with you. And Lord, you said, try me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. So we just decree and declare an open heaven and promotion and financial blessing coming to your people in the name of Jesus, Lord. You said so not just me it was your word so we decree it so in jesus name amen release the children and teens love that I love that and that was one of the first songs that I heard when I came back to Jesus uh, 18 years ago I heard uh, a band doing that song and I didn't even know what worship was 
uh, and I knew God in my youth, and I, and I was saved according to what people say is saved. And then 10 years later, the Lord spoke to me that I was on my way to hell after I lived like hell for 10 years. You know that you live like the way where you want to be for all of eternity, and God's not going to get in the way of your will. He's going to let you go where you want to. Amen? But God spoke to me about it. And, uh, and when I came back, the interesting thing was I didn't know how to get saved because I was in darkness. I had literally walked away, I had walked away to such a degree that I wasn't going to make heaven if I were to die. That's a scary thing. Amen. And, uh, uh, and so secondly, I didn't know how to worship. So like when worship was going, I was just standing there looking like, I didn't know. And thank God that nobody jumped up there and said, you better worship if you really love God. Because I was like, that would have like whipped me to death. Like I didn't know. How many know that God's going to be harvesting people that literally don't know what to do? They don't know our Christian ease. They don't know our Christian things. Amen. And, uh, but you may, have a, you may have a John the Baptist out there. You might have a, a Billy Graham out there. You know what I'm saying? Some of these men of God were saved in little churches of 15 people or, or by a drive-by track or somebody gave them a track or something like that. You never know what seed it is whenever you witness and you bring somebody to church. You never know who you're reaching. Amen. So I have, a, I have a message called How to Go Deeper with God. Let me try to think of what I'm supposed to do. Um, so we're about to start a van pickup ministry. So for people that don't have a ride to church, let me just ask you by the showing of fans, but it has to be, but not, we're not going all the way out into Beaumont. So it's, it, we have to be within reason, okay, because we literally just can't go everywhere. And we already have a few that need to be picked up, but we're looking at Nederland. Say with me, Nederland. Port Natchez and Groves. So does anyone know someone in that area that needs to be picked up for church? Raise your hand to where I can see it if you know someone. Okay. Now, there may be someone online. In fact, a friend of mine that I think is watching tonight may need a ride uh, from Port Natchez. So you know who you are. But anyways, um, if you all know someone, and what we're about to do is I'm about to put a little video on Facebook. And I'm trying to get people to take notice of the video and say, hey, look, Passion Church is doing a van ministry to pick up folks that don't have a ride to church. And I'm going to name those three cities and uh, ask them to contact Edie or Misty. Amen? So, and if y'all can see that little video, please share it to uh, 10 million people so that we can see who needs a ride, actually, to church. Amen? Y'all okay? So uh, how to go deeper with God? How many want to go deeper with God? And now when I say that, I, I realize that it's almost like it doesn't do justice to what I'm trying to say because people are like, oh, I'd like to go a little bit deeper. And some are like, well, no, I'm good. And I'm like, you know, in general, we're, we're like a lot of Christians are kind of like surface level people, you know. I mean, probably not at this church, probably just at other churches. <laughs> No, but I'm saying, like, people are real surface level. Like, we're really fleshly. You know what I mean? Like, it, and I'm going to get into that later. Somebody said the flesh. But we want to go a little deeper because how many know you can't reach anyone? You really can't even reach your own household if you don't have any spiritual depth to you. Amen? Because your substance begets substance. Amen? So your substance is, is the actual authority in your life that will transfer to the people around you. Am I right? So what we want to do is go a little deeper, amen? So I, I don't know how else to name this message, but I call it Go Deeper. But we're going to actually look at the mystery of, 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 the, of Babylon that's going to be bur it's burned in the book of Revelation. The spirit of Babylon uh, uh, is, uh, Babylon represents a spirit, but it also represents a city, but it also represents a, a people group or a culture of people that are producing uh, abominations in the earth. That's exciting, isn't it? Talk about that. Yay. So I want to talk about it because we're going to look at how a seducing spirit can, can begin to seduce a person and pull them into a distraction mode and keep them surface level. Amen? So uh, number one, so what are you paying attention to? So I, I know this might sound silly, but I feel like the Lord put this in my heart. What are you paying attention to? What are you paying for with your attention? So whenever, you, whenever you, you look at something, you give your time to something, how many know when you're, paying your, when you're paying attention to something, you're paying for something that you're going to receive? Does that make sense? What are you paying for with your attention? Number one, when you pay attention, your attention is paying for what you are focused on. When you pay attention, your attention is paying for what you are focused on. Somebody say sowing and reaping. The same, it's the same, uh, but isn't it interesting that when we talk about focus up, we use, we use this phrase, pay attention. 
Isn't that interesting? Oh, well, maybe I just only, only I thought so. So somebody say with me, the wages of sin is death. So Romans 6.23, say, say it with me, the wages of sin is death. Now, what did you just say? Now, some translations actually say the payment for sin is death. Now, what is sin? Sin is a seed. Sin is a deed. Sin is an action. Sin is not only an action, but it's even at the thought level. Jesus said if we looked at someone lustfully, that we actually committed adultery with them already in our heart. Somebody say, wow. So, I mean, like, what? So we actually need the righteousness of Christ because we got issues. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, dude, you got issues. <laughs> so say it would be the wages of sin is death. <laughs> but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, somebody say, but the gift. Come on, can somebody give God a shout of praise? Now, we know that the gift, you can, not, we're not going to do this, but I can bring, I'm just, my, my mind's like bringing up all kinds of verses, but Romans 5, 17 talks about a scripture we use all the time that talks about how the transgression of the one man, Adam, brought death to rule over many, but how many of the gift is in two parts. It's the grace and it's the righteousness because the grace saved you, but the righteousness changed your nature. I mean, I hope somebody can say amen because it's not just knock the devil off my back and I go do the same thing and I got to get in the same line again to have the same devil cast off me, but thank God for the somebody to preach the word actually also and not just the anointing so that I can understand that my righteousness was given to me straight from Jesus that I would believe and my nature would be changed so I would leave I would actually leave I would leave the sin behind because I'm of the craving and the taste for sin would leave my mouth amen because until it does you'll keep needing the devil cast out of you again and I've gotten to where I won't pray for anybody for deliverance unless you actually go through a long process of repenting on your own because you just aren't ready. Amen. And we get all excited because people manifest demons. I'm not excited about that. I've been doing this for 18 years. I'm not excited about that. I'm excited whenever it leaves and the person's changed. Can I get a witness? And, it cha and people change because of no different, not just a great anointing. We get excited about a great anointing. I do. I know I do. I love a great anointing. But Jesus is telling me that in these days, it's going to be the message with the power. There has to, we have to preach the message the way that it originally was to reveal righteousness and grace. Amen? So you pay for what you focus on. Set your mind on things above, and you will get things from above. Set your mind on the things above, and you'll get things because you're paying your attention. Are you seeing this? And you receive things from above. So Colossians 3, 2 through 3, I love, I use this verse every, every month probably three or four times. Somebody say with me, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Say with me, you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So here's a new revelation about this verse. How many of you, if you keep bringing up the same verses over and over, you start, you start getting... Uh, deeper in that re different revelation from that verse. That verse will become part of you just like a rib or an organ. Amen. It becomes part of you, become built by the word. So what happens is this, is that my focus on the, when I'm focused on the world, my faculties are dead to God. When I'm focused on God, my faculties die to the things of the world. So even the, the taste for it, and I, I'm leading you somewhere. This is not just a cute thing to say. So I'm leading you somewhere. There's something that we crave, and it's worldly. Does this make sense? And it's a root system, but I want to talk to you about it. Are you ready? So when we fix our mind on this world, we appear in a sewage ditch. It comes out of our mouth. It comes out of our crookedness. We slander other people. We don't even want to repent over it. We're foul. We're foul creatures. We drink, we drink uh, iniquity like water. Amen? And refuse to repent. Y'all see what I'm saying? I mean, that's mankind. Nobody at this church, though. <laughs> Y'all feel, maybe the Baptist church or something. No, I'm just kidding. Somebody, somebody's like, dude, you're riding the line on that. I know, it's just a joke. But don't joke about, no, I'm kidding. So say it would be, when we fix our mind on Christ, we appear with him in glory. My God, how many have experimented? Look, 
you got to do you got to do a good faith experiment every now and then. How many have experimented with fixing your gaze? Come on, with focusing hard on on the presence of God during a worship service. Come on, or at your house with some worship going on. And you're like, I just want to forget all about my problems. I just want to focus on Jesus. And then something happened in the midst of that focus. Something happened where it's like you seem like you were appearing with Christ in glory. Can somebody give God a shout of praise if you feel what I'm saying? I didn't put the verse, but that is the next verse. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our hope, appears, we will also appear with him in glory. Can somebody shout glory? So when, just so you're focusing on Jesus, man. You're appearing in the glory. The glory is appearing in your house. Righteousness, peace, and joy. The chaos ran out the door. Come on. The demon of chaos ran out your back door. Why? Because you're focusing on Jesus now. Amen. But the same as you begin to focus on the things of the world or even your problems or even a person or whatever, then you, you find yourself appearing in the sewage ditch. Am I right? Pollution. Our focus, our fixation, somebody say it with me, our fixation, come on, our amazement with this world, come on, brings us into toxic levels. Amen. Number two, our amazement, look, I put our, our, that's like a, that's a cool thing to do. That's something new we're doing now. Our, our, say with me, our, our, <laughs> I don't know. Amazement with this world causes us to be hoodwinked or bewitched. To become bewitched by this world. Revelation 17, and we're going to do verse 3 and then verse 5 through 7. And I know people are going to want to read the rest of the book and find out who the Antichrist is and who the whore of Babylon is and is it Beyonce and all this. But I don't want to get into all that kind of stuff, amen? Because I'm, can I be honest with you, what people do with the book of Revelation, I, I, can I be rude for a second? Like what people do with the book of Revelation shows how carnal we are. We're looking for God to tell us what, when's the last day on earth so that we can live like whatever and find out what all this cool knowledge because we're still eating off the tree of knowledge, good and evil. And he's trying to say the book of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus, not a bunch of information so you can argue with somebody or know something more than somebody else. And everybody has a different, I'm going I'm to get off that soapbox. I, I digress. So we need to see what is the revelation in the spiritual realm that I can apply to my life. Can I get a witness? So watch this. We're going to look at this. We're going to look at this, okay? So the angel, and I'll give you some details, but I'm just warning you. When I give you some details, for, for some of you, you might be like, oh, well, Lord, i got to Google this and go there and YouTube this. and Anyway, please don't, okay? <laughs> so the angel took me in the spirit. So I want to start off by saying that the angel took John, who wrote Revelation, he took him into the spirit realm, okay, to show him a revelation that will have an application, right? He took him into the spirit, into the wilderness, and there he said, I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. Wow. He saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. This represents a spirit. And not just one spirit, but it, 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 it represents a type of spirit. A type of spirit, an unclean spirit. Somebody say unclean. I'm going to go ahead and tell you it represents the porn industry. It represents anything foul. It represents sex trade. I want you to hear what I'm saying. It represents anything abominable in the earth. And what I'm just telling you is exactly what John says. I didn't get this from YouTube or, okay, I'm just telling you, I memorize the book of Revelation word for word. I think about it all the time. I love the book of Revelation, uh, uh, and, I'm, and I don't want to use Revelation. At, the Lord told me not to use it as a road map, and I know this probably went right across somebody's against someone's theology, but I'll use it to see who Jesus is and how to live in this life. Does that make sense? And yes, there are signs that we need to recognize that are in the book of Revelation, okay? But he said, say with me, a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. Now, the beast is one of eight kings. The beast is the eighth king, okay? So the beast is an actual person. Are y'all hearing me? So it is an actual political figure, okay? So say it with me, the beast is a person. Now, the, the, the scarlet, I'm sorry, the woman is sitting on the beast. Do you, I want you to understand that a seducing spirit will rest on a man. A seducing spirit will rest on a woman, to influence them. Are you hearing me? How many is your spirit already bearing witness with what I'm saying? So the beast had seven heads and ten horns. And the blasphemies against God were written all over it. So the beast is all about blasphemy. The beast is part of, a, is part of, a, is part of an evil trinity. 
How many know what the Holy Trinity is? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. But it doesn't matter because we know that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit operate together. They are the only three that are considered divine. Amen. God's status. Y'all following? So the devil always imitates. He always imitates. If there's a true prophetic gift, then there's a soothsayer. There's a witch. There's a palm reader. Right? So the name written on her forehead... uh, Okay, did I read that all of that? The seven heads and ten horns. Now, let's talk about nations that, that's, that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be that, that are going to rise up in the end times. Say it with me, blasphemies against God were written all over it. And I'm going to warn you, you got to be careful because when you speak out against the people of God, then this is it's very, you understand that you get into the same water with this. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. This is what it said. Babylon the Great, the mother of of prostitutes, the mother of prostitutes, and of the abominations in the earth. Say with me, the mother of prostitutes, and of the abominations of the earth. So this spirit, this spirit is the mother of prostitution, and sex trade, and vile things in the earth that enslave women, that enslave men. Are you seeing this? The mother has an umbilical cord. So this spirit has a womb. Are you seeing this? It's reproducing demonic debauchery in the earth and using sex, sexuality to control men and to control women because it's seducing them. Is this right? But it goes way beyond sexuality, way beyond, amen? Amen. So I could see that she was drunk. Somebody say drunk. With the blood of God's holy people. Wait, what? The holy people? Do you know how many Christians are caught up in this in the stuff that have to do with are y'all understand this? Drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. So a witness for Jesus, the spirit will come after that witness. Y'all hear this? I stared at her in complete amazement. I want to show you something. John was literally being hoodwinked. He was literally falling into a seductive, a seduced state in the middle of the vision. You hear me? I stared at her. In, I've never heard a preacher talk about this. I stared at her in complete amazement. And then the angel said, why are you So amazed, the angel asked. Because angels don't have flesh. So when John was like, huh? (laughs) Looking at this probably super scandalous looking woman, the mother of all prostitutes. Come on. And John was like, this is reality. And the angel was like, what are you doing? Because some versions in the Greek say stared. Some of the Greek versions say stared. He was like, And the angel's like, why are you staring at this? Why do you think the angel said that? Get his attention. What are you staring at, John? Y'all see this? Why are you so amazed, the angel asked. Somebody say amazed. How many know that whenever we worship God, I don't want to lose anybody and get distracted right now. This is really important what I'm saying. How many know whenever whenever we see God and we say, you're amazing, God. How many are saying, God, you're amazing today in the service? When you come to the point to where you are amazed by God, you're breaking the seduction of the spirits of this world. Why are you so amazed, the angel asked. I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast and of the seven heads and the ten horns which she sits. Wow, can anybody see this? Number three, the enemy will try to use seducing spirits to keep you from God. And one of them is a religious spirit. It's all about information. It's one of the big ones. You say, well, Kyle, you're just throwing that in there. Nope, I'm a Bible preacher. And so I don't, I don't have a thought and then go look up scriptures to, to back it up. I have so much reservoir that I think from the scripture. Does that make sense? Not, I'm not trying to give myself props. I'm saying it's more dangerous. And I don't even know people that don't even know the difference. I can recognize when a preacher got a prophetic revelation and went to the Bible to back it up, and that can be okay uh, sometimes, depending on the level that a person is actually walks in good character. But what happens is we substitute the written scripture for prophetic revelation, and we are way off. We don't have the zeal. 
We don't have the authority. Our kids don't do right. Our lives are wrecked. We're having to take medication. Does this make sense? Do you realize that I've been around the prophetic movement for 18 years and for 12 years in the church and seen, it, seen how, how wrong it is? Because when I get in the word, I have to be crucified with Christ. When I get in the word, I'm crucified. My mind is crucified in the written word. Remember what Jesus said he, whenever he dealt with the devil, the temptation in the 40 days of fasting, he never prophesied. He said, it is already written. Why did he do that? That's where the authority is. The angel asked, I will tell you the mystery. Wow, somebody say the mystery. Now watch this, number three. So I work overtime in this church every single year of this church that I can remember after the first couple of years when I saw the power of God knocking people out. I saw radical deliverances and the same people had the same problems the next year. That people would come to our church because we had more manifestations. And I'm going all the way back 12 years, okay? To our first building. We have, this is the third building the church has been in. And mom was there the whole way. Am I, am, I, am I making stuff up? So what I've seen was that the way that I got saved was the way that God would call me to help other people. I, gotta, I can't give what I don't have. What, how did I get saved? Well, God warned me about hell. So the fear of the Lord, by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. You're like, oh, we don't, we're not scared of God. We just, uh, we just love everybody. And a lot of those movements, if you, if you really know these people, there's, a, there's no character. I don't know if y'all feel what I'm saying. So there has to be a healthy fear of God. God's not a joke. He's not your homeboy. But then you have to know the love of God or you're going to be an orphan. If you say you know the love of God, but you're ready for God to take you out of the church every week, you're an orphan, friend. Y'all, we have deep orphan issues deep in us. We're born orphans, spiritual orphans. So we don't accept the people of God. And, we, and, and at best, we get in our little, our little groups, and, and it gets all ingrown. Cindy Jacobs was talking about that. She was like, man, these little groups, they get all ingrown, and they're so fear-ridden, and there's, and there's no connection to a greater move. And, and I'm like, you know what, man? We need the Holy Ghost to come and wash that out. Amen? Number three, the enemy will try to use seducing spirits to keep you from God. What I see with people is I see great potential in people. Can we, can we agree that everyone has different giftings? Can we agree? The, the gift that I have that I, it drives me crazy sometimes is I see great potential in people to do great things. And not always with our church, like to do things outside of our church. And so I just want to push them in my messages, knowing that some will get mad. But I'm like, but if you... Get in your destiny somewhere down the road, then I did what I'm supposed to do. I'm driven by it. I'm eaten up by it. So I'm, I'm not like a mother that's, oh, it's okay, baby. I'm more like the drill sergeant. Come on, get up. Come on, do another push-up. Come on, you can do it. Get ready. There's a war out there. I mean, that's just, it's in me. You know what I'm saying? I can't help it. That's all I got, you know? So 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 3, ready? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits. What are these it's not just the Babylon twisted thing. Watch this. And doctrines of devils. What is that? Forbidding to marry. If you read the next verse. Forbidding to marry. That's the doctrine of demon. That's what a seducing spirit wants you to do. Oh, man, that pastor got divorced. Oh, man, that person went through a divorce. They must have failed. We were praying for them. Well, you don't know nothing about their story. You know nothing about their story. You feel what I'm saying? And people can walk in a level of bigotry and not even realizing that their life doesn't produce pure fruit. Does this make sense? And our life is happening so fast. We don't know if we were to walk out of this place and fall dead. And, 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 and what fruit are we producing with our religiosity forbidding and, and abstaining and oh yes and all this stuff and we know all this stuff and then, but there's no, there's no spiritual children. Even our own children are going nuts. Come on, somebody, help me out here. I'm just talking, I'm just mentioning 90% of the American church. Just when we thought we were special in our situation, <laughs> everybody else is screwed up too, you know? Doesn't that, isn't that humbling though to think about this stuff? This is reality, man. Seducing spirits try to keep you from knowing reality the way that God knows it. We see a vision, but we can't see the vision. Come on, y'all feel me? So watch this. 
The enemy is trying to seduce you to keep you in the flesh, and we don't even know it's the flesh. We don't even realize it's the flesh. Now, sometimes we do. If it's the sexual things, if it's something, say with me, the big sins. If we know the big sins, we know. But the, but the, the sin that the enemy used to take out Jesus was the religious sin. It was the guys that knew a lot of stuff. Amen? So watch this. The enemy will try to use seducing spirits to keep you in the flesh. The natural man cannot receive the spiritual things of God. How do you know if somebody's receiving something spiritual? Because they are producing spiritual offspring. Say it with me, 1 Corinthians 2.14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. What is the flesh? It's our lower nature. Somebody say the flesh. You ready? Shadow with me, pride. Judgment. Immorality. Addiction. Insecurity. Vain ambition. Greed. Control. Fear. These are all part of the flesh. So if you receive Christ, he is now in you. Is this right? If you, if you receive Christ, he's in you. How many have received Christ? Come on, come on. Think about it. If you've received Christ, where is he at? Where is the spirit of Christ? In, inside of you, right? Now, I heard a preacher saying, well, we don't, it's not biblical to say we receive Jesus. Like another example of a person that doesn't read the Bible. John 1, verse 12. Say it with me, as many as received him. Who? Jesus. To them he gave the right to become children of God. So we're working with our kids and we're like, hey kids, you ought to try this with your kids. Hey kids, uh, is everyone in the world uh, children of God? And, and so some of the kids were like, yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah, we are the children of God. You know? Well, that's what they said on the, on the Grammys, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Our kids don't watch the Grammys. But I'm saying that's what people think, right? We're all children of God, right? But how many know that no, only the ones that received him are given the right. That's a legal right. Amen. So it would be a legal right. You were an orphan, but now you're grafted in as one of the natural children to receive all the rights of a natural child. Can you give God a praise if you feel what I'm saying? So I'm talking about this because I'm talking about what is your reality? What is your reality? So he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. I, I'm bold enough to believe that God can change my reality, and I'm preaching that because I'm asking him for that. How many are not asking God to change your reality? I want to challenge you. I want to see right now. Who in this room is not asking for God to change your reality because you've arrived spiritually and you already know reality the way that God knows it? I'm just throwing that out there to make you think. What if God said, son, uh, I want you to think a little bit more, more like me, so let me reach down and take that old head of yours and, and adjust a couple of things in there that you think you have all figured out, and then light's going to flow through you, and you're going to multiply children in the earth just like the stars in the sky. Come on, man. Give God a praise if you... I mean, is that not the scripture? I'm challenging somebody right now to give birth. Come on, I'm challenging you, man. If anyone belongs to the Lord, he's one spirit with him. If anyone belongs to the Lord, that's another scripture. Say it with me. If, if anyone belongs to the Lord, he's one spirit with him. Number four, we're going to get rolling here. The flesh blocks us from knowing reality the way that Christ knows it. And we don't even know it's flesh. We think if we feel the presence of God, then we're, 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 we're not in the flesh anymore. How many Christians that feel the presence of God are way in the flesh? Can I tell you something wild? I can't, man, I want to tell you details, but then you kind of figure out, and I can't because, but there's a person that I love very dearly, uh, very much in the world, and they have a lot of problems, okay, but I would meet with them. I haven't seen them. Actually, I saw them walking down the road a while back, and I just didn't even feel the green light to say anything. They're just so far gone uh, right now that I, well, that's not why I didn't feel the God leading me to say, I just, have you ever seen somebody, and you're like, you don't, the Lord's like, just let them be right now, do you feel me? Well, at one point, I was meeting with this person, they're very steeped, I can't tell you in what, but they're very steeped in something uh, that a lot of people know this person, okay, and they would meet with me kind of like in private, and we would pray, <laughs> And the glory of God would fall so hard, man, that I was, like, astonished by it. I was astonished by how strong the glory of God would come and, and literally crash into the meeting place that we were praying. And we're both on the floor crying. That's how much God loved that person, man. Did you know that I don't know a person that could stack up sin like that, <laughs> like that guy? So you would think 
that if when you get out the flesh, when you get the veil away, the presence will come. No, the presence comes because you believe that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. It doesn't mean that you're not in the flesh. It doesn't mean that you're not controlled by a carnal nature still because you've learned how to touch the presence of God. It doesn't mean nothing. God promised he would come like the rain. But are we going to live in the flesh with the glory? Or are we going to come out of the flesh and be transformed and have some kids now? I'm challenging you. From man's perspective, we would never seek to enter the presence of God. We would never try to enter the, oh, let's go into the presence of God now. No, that'll never happen until somebody begins to have a revelation. Come on, somebody. It'll never happen with man's perspective. So the beginning of the perspective of God that he wants to give his children is, there's more of me. I want you to come into my presence and begin to know me. Amen. That, his presence is the very beginning of his kingdom. It's the very beginning. Amen. Now, there's degrees of authority that have a lot to do with sacrifice, but we're not talking about that. We're just talking about the presence. Hebrews 10, 19 through 20. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, somebody say, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. What is the veil? It's any flesh. The flesh of Christ was strung up on a cross. And, and, and because he was righteous, at the same time, God ripped the veil that was separating the glory from the common person. Right? So when his veil, his flesh, was given and sacrificed completely, then God was no longer separated from man. The glory could now rush into the earth. That's why Jesus prayed John 17. He said, the same glory that you've given me, I have given to them. Wow. Is that not powerful? Jesus had to give, had to, had to tear the, the veil of his own flesh. In the Old Testament, how many know the Old Scripture, the Old Testament Scripture, they would rip their garments. And how many know the, the, the prophet said, oh, rip your flesh, not your garment. I mean, you're ripping your garment, but your heart's still hardened. How many know that, that we're supposed to rip the flesh? Even the word covenant means to cut. I'm just trying to share a revelation that's workable, that's usable, okay? How many of we got to press past the flesh? Therefore, the veil, that is his flesh. Somebody say the flesh. So not just immoral people or the big sins, but also religion, amen? Remember, we gave a list. Insecurity, vain ambition, greed. We gave a list of things that are obvious uh, fruit of the flesh. And Paul gives other lists. But uh, I gave the list that I felt the Lord was supposed to, I was supposed to give. So the flesh produces man's perspective. Say with me, man's perspective. So from man's perspective, I'm just, just track with me and I'm, I'm going to be getting done quick. From man's perspective, I want you all to think with me. How many people with a flesh carnal perspective, how many people are going to just, because of a man's perspective, seek more of God? They're not going to. They're never going to do that. In fact, they're going to argue with you about it. Like, what do you mean seek more of God? God's already here. He's already given us everything. Well, you don't look like it. <laughs> your kid's full of devils. So is your wife. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where, come on. You know what I mean? Like, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? I don't want to sit there and look in all good saying I got the fruit. I want to actually have the fruit, man. I don't care about We got to get past looking good and looking all spiritual. Who gives a flying flip about that? And I borderline tell y'all everything, and I know that I'm giving religious spirits the opportunity to think, oh, that pastor's really messed up. He's not like the other pastor. That... Now, I really don't give a flying fruit loop because I want, I want to know that we are truly being humble and truly inviting the real authority from heaven to come and exalt us not in the power of man. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? I'm all over the place. Forgive me. So 2 Corinthians 3, 14 through 15. But their minds were made dull. Somebody say dull mind. For to this day, the same veil, somebody say flesh, remains when the old covenant, somebody say the Bible, when the Bible's read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. It, it, it can be potentially taken away in Christ. But how many know Christians that don't even believe in all of the Bible? Or, and, and that's all of us. We all are in a process. So that means that even Christians have veils. We all have flesh. I'd rip my shirt, but I don't want y'all to, I don't want y'all to sin. I'm kidding. It's a, it's a terrible joke. <laughs> For real. 
Somebody say, rip the flesh. <laughs> we all. Oh, so let me, wait, let me stick on this for a second. Because only in Christ is taken away. Now, can I, can I share, share something with you? Somebody say with me, their minds were dull. Have you noticed that, I'm going to try to not be too rude about this, but the people that believe in the Holy Ghost can, can, can do some really stupid things. And be completely goofy. And it's like people in the world are like, man, you're goofy. And like, well, my pastor said, I'm weird, so I'm just going to be strange and goofy. And I'm like, I mean, I get what you're saying, but that means you're not supposed to look like somebody else. It doesn't give you a license to throw out wisdom. Because without wisdom, you can't win any souls. Just understand what I'm saying, please. So our mind is dull, but when we move the flesh out of the way, we get sharp. Doesn't mean we can't be goofy. Please understand what I'm saying. I'm saying there should be a sharpness. Y'all feel me, right? Please be goofy. Don't, don't misunderstand me, okay? Be silly and have fun. But I'm saying there's, there should be a sharp blade in the spirit. Come on. Our minds should be sharp enough to cut right through the veil. Amen? You see what I'm saying? I know people that God's given them wisdom to create a, a tool, and the tool, now they just, the tool just makes thousands of dollars. They just created one little tool. And the guy, he's, he's a little wild. But I'm saying, like, that guy has more wisdom in one pinky finger. And I'm just like, y'all, no, we have the same Holy Spirit that makes us no longer dull. Come on. Well, we get the flesh out, and God's going to make you wise. Come on. A wise master builder. Amen. So it's only removed, the veil is only removed in Christ. Amen. The Bible said that the veil covers the heart. Somebody say the heart. So when the heart is covered up, then the mind is dull. But watch, God opens the heart and the mind is sharpened. God, isn't that cool? Can somebody give God a praise for that, please? That's something he can do. Man-made doctrine puts a veil over our heart. 2 Corinthians 3.18. So I've been reading this verse almost every time. Can y'all say it? We all... With unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So we're beholding the Lord. Why is it a mirror? Why has it got to be a mirror? Because when you see a mirror, you see you. Come on. When I saw the mirror, I see my reflection. I'm not just looking at Christ to see how beautiful he is. I'm looking at Christ to see how beautiful I am in Christ. Man, I hope somebody's picking this up. When I see the righteousness in him, the righteousness appears in me. When I see the glory in him, the glory appears in me. When I see him taking authority over devils, then the authority comes into me. Come on, somebody. When I see what he's got, I can see what I got. Amen. Can somebody give God a praise? I mean, I'm just saying we should praise him for that, right? <laughs> Say it with me. We all with unveiled face. Beholding as in a mirror. What are we beholding? The glory of the Lord. Our being what? Transformed. Somebody say go deeper. We're not going to be surface, surface level looking good on Sunday only. No, we're going to be something's happening on the inside. Say we'll be transformed from into the same image. Somebody shout the same image. From glory to glory. Just as by the Spirit of God. People are walking around. I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Well, I can tell. Look at you. You're dull. I'm sorry, I shouldn't. But I'm saying, I want the Holy Ghost, man, because I want him to take me into the realms of glory. You should come this weekend to Revival Weekend and sit through every single service and be like, God, get the veil, get the flesh. I get the fle I'm going to shake that flesh off of me right now. I'm going to cut right through. I'm going to tear the flesh off. I want my spirit to see, spirit to spirit. I want to see him with the eyes of faith. I want the eyes of my heart to be filled with heaven's light. How many want to be changed? In my character, I don't care if I heal the sick more than somebody else after the meeting. I want to be righteous. I want to have character. I want to have two strong legs to stand under the weight of persecution and temptation that will come in the future. I want to have character. Amen? What, what does the same image look like? Somebody shout. I got I to slide. Somebody shout, seek God. Seek the lost. Disciple. And power manifests to destroy the enemy. Number five, and we're close. Here we go. Go below the surface level. Somebody say, go below the surface level. Shallow people get ripped off. <laughs> I just had to say that. How many are tired of being shallow, getting ripped off? Come on, man. Shallow howl over there. Here we go. Y'all shouldn't know what that is, but 
BC, baby. So if you're not taking the time to fast and pray and read the word. Well, the Lord didn't lead me to. Can, can I bust out some scriptures and show you that God doesn't tell you everything? Do we need to do that? How many remember that Agabus got a word? The other prophets didn't get the word. Neither did Paul or Peter. Only Agabus got it. So if the Spirit was telling everybody everything, how many of the humility happens when I have to hear Crystal tell me this is what I feel like the Lord's saying? And I'm like, snap. Because I have to recognize God in Crystal. Christ in Crystal. Come on. How many? I got to recognize Christ in Penny. Penny actually gave me a word, and I hear lots of words with very little fruit. Can I just be super ornery with this for first? Like, I mean, try being me. I'm just put yourself in my shoes. Penny gives me a word about a week ago, and it came to pass in 24 hours. Give God a praise. I mean, it's, that's legit. But she also chooses to pray with us in the morning. Well, I mean, would that have something to do with it? I don't know. I'm just going to kind of leave it out there make you think about it. Because people that run together, they, they share the anointing and they hear things because they're sacrificing and God's bringing them into more authority. I hope you hear what I'm saying right now. Because you don't increase authority by sitting in your own comfort zone. Oh, man, I hope y'all can find some scriptures to back that up. Come on, amen. Jesus didn't increase his authority until he fasted for 40 days. And he didn't choose to go out. The Lord said, Jesus, I want you to get up now and follow me. I'm going to take you to be tempted. Wow, that's crazy. What? Well, I thought God just told me everything. I'm so prophetic. Well, welcome to the club of people that think that. Welcome to the club. Many people think that. I thought that until God literally had to rebuke me. God literally rebuked me. It's a long story. And I thought because I spent literally at that time eight to ten hours a day in the glory with the realm of vision that I would not miss a thing. And God shut me down on that. And because I didn't realize that I wasn't thinking that some, sometimes you're going to hear a word, especially through a spiritual leader. But it could be somebody, it could be anybody, man. Because when you're running together, you have faith with love. Or do you have faith with love? Because an orphan doesn't have much love. They don't trust anybody. But when you have faith with love, the Bible says that love energizes faith. Go below the surface level. Shallow people get ripped off. Is that true? Now, I've heard words from a lot of y'all that, that I've, God's used it, but I'm talking about if, you, if, I could, if I could literally record all the crazy words that I get. And, and I had one, and one was a pastor. Like, I mean, he was just ready to go, shooting, out, shooting off the, uh, from the hip some prophetic word that was nonsense and flesh. And I didn't want to call him out on it, so I was like, all right, thank you, man. <laughs> Jesus. Y'all know what I mean, right? So if you're not taking the time to fast and pray and read the word, you're not going below the surface level. You're not going to increase in your authority, and you have to increase in authority because your future is really big, and you haven't even scratched the surface of it. Your future is really big, and you haven't even... What if, what if your future was so big that you literally couldn't imagine it? You thought you imagined it when you did your little vision board. I know I'm probably getting to somebody's cool around, but this by the Spirit. But God said you haven't scratched the surface of it, but you've got to get over yourself to come into the mighty river that goes over the head. Because you put your ankle in, you put your knee in, you put your waist deep, but now you're supposed to go all the way over your head, and you've got to get down low to get over your head. The material world is built with the spiritual world. The true riches are in the spirit, amen? A major key to the spirit is the sacrifice of faith. If I see somebody launched out of this church to do something amazing, and I never see them again, they never help my ministry again, you know what? I, I, I have attained the goal that I was called uh, apostolically to launch somebody and to put a fire under their rear end to make them go. Y'all don't understand. That's how, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about it. I mean, how many believe that, you're, that you have a major, huge future? No, anyone? Jesus said, I've called you to bear great fruit. But he didn't put you in a, in a church with a snowflake. He put you in the church with somebody that would put, come on, put a fire poker underneath you. Come on, come on. And make you mad a little bit. Like, what are you talking about? You talking to me? You talking to me? And then make you think about it. Like, come on, maybe God's speaking to me, trying to get me out of my religiosity and get me to shake loose of that old, oh, that, that old perversion that I've been holding on to, that old thing that I've been holding on to, that ego trip that I've been on. Come on, what if God wants to shake us loose? 
All right, we're closing. Psalms 1, 1 through 5. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the written word. Somebody say the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Somebody say day and night. Night and day. Come on, morning and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. Somebody say a taproot. God wants you to send a taproot all the way deep down into the glory of his presence. Amen? A taproot. But it started with the written word, and you meditated on the written word until your flesh died. Come on, and your eyes began to see something, and your root went deep down into the, into the underwater table by the river. Come on. And your root started getting into the presence of God. Planted by the rivers of water. Brings forth the fruit in season. How many seasons are you going to miss? I'm speaking prophetically to somebody's spirit. How many seasons are you going to miss and say that God says so? How many seasons are we going to miss? How many seasons are we going to miss? Whose leaf does not wither. How many times are we going to sit there and die and wither? But it was somebody else's fault. And whatever I do, somebody say, whatever I do, it'll prosper. How many are ready to come into that? Everything I touch my hand to, it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. The devil can't take it down. The enemy can't stop me. Jezebel can't stop me. Come on, the flesh can't stop me because I am literally rooted with a taproot into the love of God. And Christ dwells in my heart by faith. Somebody say, deep cries out. Can we get the worship team to come up? Psalm 42, verse 7. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Somebody say deep calls out. How many know that the deep in you, God's calling to awaken the deep inside of you. How many believe that God would call to awaken the deep on the inside of you? Jesus' words become spirit, and the spirit provides building materials for the spiritual man. And we're going to end on this. Uh, John 6, 63. And I love this verse. Can y'all read it with me? It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Somebody say the flesh profits nothing. How many are tired of your life not producing, not profiting? How many feel what I'm saying? The flesh profits nothing. Come on. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Somebody shout life. How many would stand up with me and begin to pray? Father, we pray an awakening on the inside. Awaken the interior. Somebody say, Lord, awaken me on the inside. Come on, I feel like there's somebody here and your calling has been, on, has been on hold. I feel like there's somebody here and your calling has been on hold. That you've been like one of those airplanes that's in a holding pattern. That you weren't able to land because your calling was on hold. And we decree and declare right now that in the name of Jesus, there's an awakening on the inside of you. Where you would say, I'm tired of putting God on hold. I'm tired of sitting in my flesh. I'm tired of dwelling on the past hurt and the past pain of what somebody he did to me. Somebody say awaken. Come on, I pray the spirit of awakening tonight, that we would awaken from the inside out. Come on, no more excuses. We say, Lord, we will awaken right now. A spiritual awakening on the inside. I'd speak to your spirit and say, awaken in the name of Jesus. 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 Your glory, your glory. Your glory. Can we worship a little bit? Jesus. Yahweh. We make a chain breaker. We make a chain breaker. Mountain mover. You're my healer. Yahweh. Yahweh. Jesus. Jesus. We make a chain breaker. Mountain mover. You're my healer. Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, somebody give him glory. A way maker, chain breaker, mountain mover. You're my healer. healer. Yahweh, Yahweh. Your glory. Your fire, God, in the speeding. A way maker, chain breaker, mountain mover. You're my healer. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. You're my healer, Yahweh, Yahweh. We glorify you. We lift up your name, God. 
place right now. Come on, how many would declare you're my healer? Come on. Healer. I feel something on that. Fire in the house. Fire in the house. My healer, my healer, my healer. You're my healer. Yahweh, Yahweh. Healer. You're my healer, Jehovah Rapha. My healer, my healer. You're my healer. You're my healer. Yahweh, yeah. Can we say freedom? You're my freedom. Can we say that? My freedom. Come on, shout my freedom. My freedom. Come on, freedom. Come on, do it again. Freedom, my freedom. My freedom, my freedom, my freedom. Come on, we go deep. We go deep with that. Yahweh, Yahweh. We need your help, Holy Ghost. My freedom, my freedom. Holy Ghost, fire on the inside. Fire release on the inside. Yahweh. Can we shout, you're my glory? Can we say, you're my glory? My glory, my glory. Come on. My glory. My glory, Yahweh, Yahweh, glory. We declare your fire, your glory in the house, your power in the house, fire of God in the house, fire of God in the house, power of God in the house right now, power of God, your kingdom come in power, freedom come tonight, God, freedom in the name of Jesus, freedom in the name of Jesus, a spirit of fear, you gotta go in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout freedom. 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 Freedom from every curse. Freedom from every curse right now. Freedom. Freedom. Like a fire, I pray, release God. Like a fire. Holy Spirit, fire in this house right now. Freedom from a spirit of religion. Somebody say freedom. Come on. Every spirit of religiosity, go from this place in Jesus' name. Come on, every spirit of unforgiveness. Somebody say, Lord, I'm forgiven them and I command it to go out of this place. Fire of God. Fire of God. My glory. My glory. The lifter of my head. My glory. My glory. The lifter of my head. Shh. Glory. Fire of God. I want to pray for you. If you have, if you need healing in your body, I pray right now the power of God loose right now. If you have pain in your back, in your neck, in your body, I command the pain to loose right now out of your body. I see someone's neck. I command the pain to loose out of your neck right now. The fire of God touching you from your head to your toe right now. The oil, fresh oil, power of the Holy Ghost loose from your head down to your toe. I pray a fresh touch on your body. Fresh touch on your body. In the name of Jesus, pain in your abdominal region. It has to go in the name of Jesus. Fire of God. Somebody say fire. Somebody say glory. Somebody say let your wind blow, God, in your house, God. Can y'all help me do something? Father, we pray for the meeting this weekend. 
Come on. How many would help me? We pray, God, that you would pour out such a fire. You would re release such a wind, oh God. Come on, help me pray, saints. We pray for revival. Revival. Come on, we declare revival. We prophesy revivals coming like a rushing mighty wind. We declare invasion of heaven's armies and the church. We decree the fire. Somebody shout fire. We decree the fire of God. The fire of God. The violent take it by force. We decree the fire fire of God the invasion of heaven come power of God Lord we've come to prepare the way how many would pray Isaiah 40 Lord we've come to prepare the way we've come to prepare the way somebody say with me Lord I'm gonna prepare the way right now come on every mountain is brought low every proud thing in me let it come down come on every valley lifted up God the rough place made smooth for the Spirit of God to move on in come on how many say, Holy Ghost, move on in? Come on, move on in, Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, every crooked place. Every crooked place made straight in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, righteousness is my gift. Somebody shout, righteousness is given to me from Jesus. Somebody shout, grace power. Grace power. Lord, we've come to infuse the atmosphere. How many would help me pray? Help me pray. We, we, we've come to infuse the atmosphere right now with the cloud of glory, with our praise, God. Be enthroned in our praise, oh God. Be enthroned in our praise. Come on. Come on, give us a prophetic declaration. Come on, Reese or, 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 or Melinda. Let's stay in this for just a minute. Come on. We decree the power of God. Come on, decree the fire of God. The glory. The power. Come on, we prepare the atmosphere for this weekend, guys. Come on. A big old prayer meeting real quick. Come on. Fire in the atmosphere. Glory in the atmosphere. Power in the atmosphere. In Jesus' mighty name, come on. Come on, somebody pray. God, like we've never seen in this place. Come on. Come on, saints. A move of God. A move of God. Glory. Move. Holy Ghost, move. Holy Ghost, move. Release. Release. Come on. Release. Come on, like a lion. Come on. Release. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Somebody shout glory in the house of God. Glory in the house of God. We've come to tear down. We've come to tear down demonic altars. We've come to tear down demonic altars. Come on. We've come to tear down anything that would lift up itself against the knowledge of God. Somebody say, I've come to tear you down. Whatever proud thing would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Come on, help me to pray. We tear it down in the name of Jesus. Fire in the house. Fire in the house. Whatever the devil has done, we tear it down in the name of Jesus. The weapon of our prayer. Somebody shout, I got a weapon. Come on. The weapon of our prayer is mighty through God to tear down strongholds. How many would reach up with your hand and tear something down with me? Come on, we tear it down with childlike faith. Fire, fire, glory. Somebody shout deliverance in the house. Somebody shout freedom, freedom, freedom in the house. Come on, y'all help us pray, help us pray. Freedom in the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout spirit of wisdom and revelation in the house of God. Somebody shout spirit of prophecy. Spirit of prophecy, spirit of prophecy, spirit of prophecy, like a fire in the house, like a fire, prophetic fire. Somebody shout prophetic fire up in the house. Oh, hey. Spirit of fire and burning. Come on, spirit of fire in the house. Spirit of fire in the house. Something's happening. Come on, something's happening. Help me pray. Help me pray. Oh, 
Let your glory be revealed. Let your glory be revealed. Let all flesh would see it together, God. Let your glory be revealed. Shout it with me. Let your glory be revealed. Let all flesh would see it together. Come on. Come on. Spirit of witchcraft, be broken right now. Spirit of witchcraft, I break your power right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of perversion, I break your power in the name of Jesus. Fire of God, fire of God. Fire of God, fire in the house. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, saints. We've come to prepare the way. We've come to prepare the way. How many would lift up your hands and give God a mighty shout of victory? Victory. Victory. Jehovah Nissi. My banner. My victory. Victory. Woo! Revival. Somebody shout it with all you got. Revival is now. Revival is now. Revival is now. Come on, don't give up. Revival is now. Revival is now. Shout it, Reese. Revival is now. Revival is now. Revival is now. Come on. Revival is now. Revival. Shut. Revival, Revival is now. Revival. Come on, break, break. Revival is now. Revival. Shout it out. Say. Revival is now. Revival is now. Come on, help me pray. Say it. Revival is now. 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 Fire in the house. Glory. Break every demonic curse. Revival is now. 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 Wow. Something happened tonight. Something happened tonight. Revival is now. Revival is now. Revival. Glory. Resurrection power is now. Glory. Glory of the Lord. Glory. The glory. 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 Somebody help me pray. Glory of the Lord. It's for the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord. For your glory, God. Oh, it's for the glory of the Lord. On high, on high. It's for the glory. It's for the glory of the Lord. For your glory, God. It's for the glory of the Lord. For your glory, God. It's for the glory of the Lord. Wow. Come on. Yay. Come on. Who would have thought? It's for the glory of the Lord. Glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. For your glory, for your glory, it's for the glory of the Lord, not for my glory, for your glory. Somebody say, not for my glory, for your glory. Come on, for your glory, your glory. It's for your glory, it's for your glory. How many can sense that presence in the room right now? That, listen, that is a very powerful intercessory prayer we just stepped into. I'm like thinking, man, we should do that every Wednesday, man. I don't know. How many can feel something? Now, let me tell you what we just did was most of what we prayed, we haven't seen it yet. We were like seeding the clouds for the rain to come down. And uh, like the revival in Phoenix, really their whole Wednesday is just prayer. But I felt like we can't, we're not going to copy somebody else's thing, you know what I mean? But I feel like we really did right by the Lord by this prayer at the end of the service today. Does anybody feel like pain left out of your body? Does anybody feel like you were healed at some point in the service? Raise your hand. Anybody? Did you really? So there's so much anointing in the air. Amen. But we need this. Can y'all, can y'all do a huge favor? Can everybody please, and anyone watching online still, can y'all pray for the next couple of days? Like when you think about it, be like, Lord, let your glory be revealed. Come on. I really feel that Isaiah 40, man, on my heart. Like, prepare the way of the Lord. The mountains be made, brought low. The valley lifted up. The rough places made smooth. And the glory of the Lord be revealed. And all flesh will see it. How many want to believe for that? Come on. Even some of our old rowdy friends will see God move and say, what is that? Come on. So please, when you think about it, 
And if you want to fast with us another couple of days, if you're able to make 7 a.m. prayer, then that will be awesome. We're going to have that. We're going to keep on doing that, actually, even through this uh, Revival Weekend. But please tell everybody you know, Revival Weekend this weekend. Amen. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you need prayer, come on up. We'll pray for people.